it's the summer series so we're kind of relaxing a little bit I don't think I've set teaching in years I've, I've always done it standing up so if I start moving tables I apologize <laughs> Um, so tonight we're actually in the in the book uh, under his influence. We're just going over the introduction tonight uh, to kind of get you ready as we dive into uh, the book. Uh, the book itself is written by Pastor Lloyd Pulley, who's from Calvary Chapel, Old Bridge. Uh, was the pastor there when 9/11 happened, right outside New Jersey, um, and uh, he's got a wonderful book on sharing the gospel. But I just with things that are happening in in our world our little world here in divine i thought it'd be good for us to do this book instead of doing the sharing the gospel book because we're we're doing that i i mean i was blessed we went to to go um to heather's uh thing they had at uh probably the best burger i've had in a long time at black creek it was good and you know, i was miserably full after that you know, but uh it was good but at the same time it's amazing when somebody is going through something and yet they're still inviting people to church. And in the middle of all of that, we were sitting at the table and they're like, hey, you should come to the church. <laughs> so that's always a, an encouragement for me because it just reminds me that we're we're doing what we're supposed to do as believers. And so um, so thank you so much for uh, for tuning in tonight. Uh, the book is available online for free. And um, we're going to go ahead and just go. I got to go over some things. The teaching won't be long because we're going to spend more time going over the questions. Uh, and once we start doing the questions, this thing will turn off. So I'll push it out of the way and we'll, we'll, we'll get together. And the whole point of it is, um, is to have fellowship and to have what they call koinia, which is actually admonishing each other with the word of God, helping each other, getting to know each other better. That's the point of doing this during the summertime. It's to, to make Wednesday night a little bit more relaxed uh, so we can get to know each other as a church and uh, invite people as well uh, to come. Uh, I did want to thank the guys. They got half the sign up Sunday, so the other half will be put up soon. And so it's, it's the little milestones that you're happy with <laughs> in a church. And then uh, uh, just I, I can't tell you all how much just having uh, Sarah to do worship and Court and Donna and all, they're always here and um, just all the help that we do have and, and Miss Elva who helps out with children's as well. So we we thank everybody as we continue to move forward. And so let's pray and then we'll go ahead and talk about the Holy Spirit. And I'll, let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for tonight. We do pray and ask that you be with us uh, uh, touch each one of our hearts, Lord. If there's any chains, anything that needs to be broken in our lives, Lord, break them. Um, you know, allow us to come come here, and uh, we don't want to be a church where we just come and leave the same way. We want to we want to actually have the Word of God uh, change our hearts uh, to to move us and and to to have Your will be done in our lives, in our marriages, in our families. Um, it's it's those practical applications that we get to do throughout the week that uh, reminds us of why we need to be in the word. Um, and I know everybody's been kind of stretched this week already. And so we, we pray and ask that you just continue to be with us, Lord, through the, the remainder of the week. And uh, we're looking forward to having Father's Day on on Sunday to have that that message as well. And uh, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing in this little church and in this town. We pray for uh, revival in our hearts and so we can see revival within this city uh, we thank you we ask these things in Jesus name amen amen all right so name of the book under his influence yielding of the work of the Holy Spirit uh, I'll read you Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 and 18 Galatians 5 16 and 18 it says but I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Um, what we're talking about here is, it's, I think Billy Graham explains it best, is, is you have, each of us have a, a dog that we feed. We either feed the flesh or we feed the spirit. And the one that you feed the most is the one that's going to win the battle. 
And, and so for us as believers or for, uh, for us as we get to um, come to Christ, one of the things is we want to walk in the Spirit. And that's what the book is, is for us to do. Is it, We'll talk about it. I think that's one of the first questions is like, is, is being a Christian too hard? It is if you're walking in the flesh. It is, it is tasking if you're doing it in the flesh. It'll wear you out. And, and so we want to be, uh, we want to be walking uh, by the Spirit. So, you know, it's important for us to remember, as uh, I think D.L. Moody said, you might as well try to hear without ears or breathe without lungs as try to live a Christian life without the Spirit of God in your heart. You, you can't do it without the Holy Spirit. And that's where the Holy Spirit dwells. And so what we need to do is, before we get into any of this, is for you to understand who the Holy Spirit is. Because that's the biggest misconception that's in the church. Um, and, and the teaching of understanding the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is known by various names in the Bible. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of Truth. Jesus referred to him specifically as the Comforter or the helper in John 14 16 it says and I will ask the father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it is neither uh, neither sees him nor knows him you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you so what he's talking about here is when we give our lives to the Lord the Holy Spirit dwells in our hearts we're sealed with the Holy Spirit so when we choose to follow Jesus Christ, we're sealed. So when God sees you, he sees you're covered by the blood of Christ, by his righteousness. That's why when, when, we, when we give our lives to the Lord, it's your past, your present, your future sins have been forgiven. Does that mean you're perfect? No. You'll still sin. There's still things that you're dealing with. We still get upset. We can still, you know, lose our cool, all that stuff. I do that. So I don't want you to sit here and think that, well, I got it all figured out. I, I mean, I mess up too, and I have to confess those sins. We sin daily, but we're covered by the blood of Christ. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit. When you choose to follow Jesus, you're his. And when God sees you, he sees his son. And that's the spirit of God that dwells in you. We talked about this before. Is like the reason why Jesus said it would, it, it's better for the helper um, I will give you another helper is because Jesus, if it, with the, and I've talked to this, somebody did the math on this, uh, some scientists did the math on it, or mathematician. With the amount of people that's in the world today, you would have one time to talk to Jesus and it would be for a half a second. What are you going to tell him in a half a second? Nothing. So that's why we have the helper, the comforter. You have the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. That's why I said it's better for me to leave and have the helper. And so we know that uh, the Holy Spirit is it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, the eternal God. And so the Bible makes it clear that the Holy Spirit is God. That's, that's a big mess. So, so we're telling you that it's God that resides in you. The power of the Holy Spirit is the Lord that resides in you. It's God the Spirit. And that's the same spirit in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. He says, He is called God. Uh, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And he's treated on an equal basis with God the Father and God the Son. In 2 Corinthians 13, 14, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit uh, be with you all. And, and so it's important that we understand that because what, what, um, you know, what, what happens with a lot of people is they, 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 they don't see the Spirit of God. They don't understand it. Um, they, they don't understand the characteristics of the Holy Spirit uh, of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, it says, These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in them? 
So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. And so th those things that are happening in your heart that you think you're hiding from the Lord, they're not being hidden. God knows. Um, those things that, that happen when you go, I shouldn't do this, but you do it anyway. You know that, that still voice that you know that's saying, don't say it. That's the Spirit trying to help you, to guide you. But see what happens is if, you're in your, if your flesh is winning the battle, what's going to happen? You're going to say it. And, and, and a lot of times what happens is people feel bad after. Because that's, they're being convicted of, of what they're doing. Uh, uh, that, that they're stepping out and saying something they shouldn't be saying. Or they're, they're, they're in sin. And so he, he does the work of God also. And in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, it says, Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but, but, man, uh, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So we know that it says that the Bible is what? God breathed. It's the Spirit of God that guided those authors and so is, is the bible from the lord the bible's from god it's inerrant it's it's without error and and so people will well, uh, well it's, it was written by man how do you get 66 books and a number of different authors from different continents from different backgrounds and it's all about god and how do you get those prophecies to line up it just doesn't happen on its own. I mean, I've shared this with y'all before. Is it just the prophecies of Jesus alone? Like one of the prophecies of Jesus. Not only they they knew we get the prophecy where he's born. We have the triumphal entry to the exact date from the book of Nehemiah that he walked, that he rode in on the donkey on the colt to the exact day that prophecy was fulfilled. You can fill, and, and you can fill, there's a book that's written on this. You can fill the whole state of Texas with coins up to your knees. And all we do is paint one of them red, front and back. And I'm going to drop that coin anywhere in the state of Texas. Anybody of y'all been driving, the state of Texas is big. So I'm going to blindfold you. You tell me, I'll put you in a helicopter. I'll, you can go all the way to El Paso. You can go all the way to East Texas. You can go all the way up to Dallas. You can go all the way down to Corpus or over to Eagle Pass. You just tell me stop, and I'll let you get out of the thing, put your hand down. And the chances of you pulling that red coin up is the chance of the prophecy being fulfilled by Jesus. And those prophecies were not just one. There were, there were many prophecies that have been fulfilled by Jesus. Many that were written in the book of Daniel, that were written in the book of Isaiah. The whole book is about Jesus Christ. And so when Jesus leaves, Jesus doesn't leave us alone. He la leaves the helper, the Holy Spirit. So in John 16, 7, it says, But I tell you the truth, it is for you, your benefit, that I'm going away unless I go away. The advocate, the helper, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. It's the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, it says, In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. You're sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. You, you have the power of the Holy Spirit in you. So when, when you have the power of the Holy Spirit in you, you're going to have people that are in heaven that are going to ask you what you did with that power. You have that inside of you. That's why on Pentecost you have all those people that came to faith on that day. It's because of the Spirit of God. And we have the same Holy Spirit in us. We have that power. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. It's that dunamis power. It's dynamite. 
I've said this before, you can throw a piece of dynamite in your living room. Is the room going to look the same? No. That's what resides in you, is the power of the Holy Spirit, the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit. And, and A.W. Tozer said that you can have as much God as you want. The problem is, is people don't want it. And I'm not talking about those that are not walking with God. I'm talking about the believers. I'm talking about people that are actually, I've given my life to Christ. They're, they're you know, they're, they're like, they, they would rather me get like one of those little drippers of water. When you can have, I've, you can either have the hose from your, your outside hose or you can have the fire hydrant. You can have as much as you want. Of, of, of God but Christians for some reason they 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 don't seek the, that power they don't seek to do God's will in their life and so it's it's being wasted so the Holy Spirit gives us power to, to be a witness for Christ so we can boldly speak his word the Holy Spirit gives us victory so we can those those sinful habits that we we struggle with the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to overcome them. It's through that power. You can try on your own. Trust me, my father tried to, out, to quit alcohol for years on his own. And there was always a relapse. And it wasn't until he gave his life to God. My brother, the same thing. I, I have, uh, my brother, it took jail before he came to faith. Drinking. And he, <laughs> we were, like, he was doing great when he was in jail because he couldn't get anything. But, you know, you have access to that stuff everywhere once you get out of jail. And, and so we were praying. We were like, man, my mom was so worried. Like, what's going to happen to him when he gets out? Is he going to go back to drinking? He had given his life to Christ. He was following God. And man, we were praying, and the uh, the the AA meeting was in the church. And the AA meeting wasn't until after church, so you would got to go sit in church, and then right after church was the the AA meeting. God had provided all that. My brother didn't overcome alcohol; the power of the Holy Spirit did. It's the same power of the Holy Spirit that can help us overcome pornography or anger. You know, um, lustful thoughts. It's, it's all those things that God can help us with. But it's inside of us when we give our heart to Christ. It's, it's the same power that says no to things that we know are wrong. And, and, and we choose to be inconvenienced rather than to act selfishly. We, it, it, the Holy Spirit helps us admit our shortcomings and our failures and our sins. You know, it's, it's, that's why I tell you all, you know, like at the end of the day, man, I'm not perfect. I'm just Michael. I'm still a father, a grandfather. Lord knows, man, them grandkids, they test my flesh. But again, which one am I feeding? You know? It, it's the Holy Spirit that helps us understand the Word of God. It helps us pray for people and those in need. Um, it helps us love people that are even unlovable. <laughs> and we all probably have somebody like that in our life. Right? That we just go, man, I just don't know how to love this person, but God helps you. It's the power of the Holy Spirit to be patient. And it, and it and encourages instead of criticizes. And it, it, it helps us take responsibility for our actions. The Holy Spirit helps us follow Christ and leads us. And so it's that war of the flesh and the spirit. And you have to ask yourself which one is winning the war. And so we, we know simply this is that uh, a very great example, and it's in this in the introduction, it talks about the uh, early disciples, and it was talking about Stephen, the first one that was martyred for the church. And, and Stephen's filled with the Holy Spirit because they, they tell him to go pick some people to help feed the, 
the women, right, the older women, and, and they, they pick people based on the work that they were already doing. They were already empowered to do the work. Uh, the Holy Spirit was already kind of guiding them as believers. And so Stephen was picked. And so in, 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 in Acts chapter 6, verse 5, it says, A man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, as it emphasizes and talks about Stephen. But it also says, Stephen was a man full of joy, uh, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. That's as he's being stoned to death. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You cannot say that without the power of the Holy Spirit. As people are stoning you to death. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God. And it's the same Spirit, the same power as we read in the early church that's in us. We are to be imitators of God. And I'll read this and then we'll, we'll button it up here and we'll start answering questions. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 21. It's very important that we read the whole thing so we can kind of get an understanding of it. But it says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. Now, we have to remember as he's talking about children, Jesus is, when, when Jesus talked about children, he talked about his infant. He's like, you're, you're to be like little children. Why as an infant? Because you're totally dependent on Christ. That's, that's why. And, and it says, as beloved children, and walk in love. As Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice to God. So if you're walking in the flesh, what kind of fragrant offering are you offering? It's going to be smelly. It's going to smell like rotten flesh. You're cursing somebody out. You're, there's no love in anything that you're saying. And then it gets into the, the fun stuff. But sexual immorality and all impurity and covetousness must not even be named among you. As is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. So now we have love and thanksgiving, right? And he's, he's telling you all this stuff that are sinful things that need to go. He says, for you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexual and moral or impure or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of, God, kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. And he's talking about those that don't follow God, that, that choose to, to just, I'm not going to have anything to do with God. It's funny, everybody wants to go to heaven, but they live like hell. They don't live like they really want to go to heaven. They think that all roads lead to heaven, and they don't. But even though they want heaven, they live like hell. They never change. But you ask somebody, you can ask anybody, you going to heaven? Man, I, I, I hope I am. Or you'll have people say, I'm going to heaven. And you go, man, but you're, you're living. <laughs> Do you know God? And every person that you'll talk to will say, yes, I know Jesus. Because they do. But do they know him personally? Because if he's your God, you're not going to be swayed by, you know, swayed by empty words. That's why when you watch the news, you shouldn't be freaking out. I think I've had my best week this week. I haven't seen no news until today. I've been busy doing things in the spirit. I'm sure later the flesh will come out at some point. I got to make sure I got to feed the spirit. But it's like I haven't had time to this week to even really sit down and look at the TV, which is great. I think we all need that at times. It's, it's good to disconnect. But it says, therefore, do not become partners with them. And he's like, don't go act and do what they do. 
For at one time you were, you, were, you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. And we talked about fruit this weekend. As Christians, we're supposed to be producing fruit. Do we produce the fruit? No. It's the Holy Spirit that produces the fruit. But it requires us to be walking in the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all that wonderful stuff. And it says, try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Did y'all get that? Take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead do what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of these things they do in secret. But when it, anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but wise. Make the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Y'all don't need anybody to tell you all that. We know the days are evil. But he tells you to make best use of your time. Godly time. You know, to do the things of the Lord. You know, Jesus can return at any time. There's nothing else that needs to happen for that to happen. All the prophecies, that, that the next thing to happen is the tribulation. That's it. That can happen tonight. You have to ask yourself, are, am I ready for that? Like, what's he going to catch me doing? So we need to make, make use of the time. Therefore, do not be foolish. But understand what, what the will of the Lord is. This is very important. This is why we're getting to this part of Scripture. As this is actually in the introduction. But what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine. For that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit. You want to know what the will of God is? Be filled with the Spirit. I don't know how many Christians I know that don't know what they're supposed to be doing. And, and God has gifted every believer at least with one gift. At least with one, some multiple. But you have to know what your calling is. And if you want to know what the will of God is, you need to be filled with the Spirit. This is why being connected to the power of the Holy Spirit is so important. Right? So, you're addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always for everything to God, the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. So, we're filled with the Spirit. We're addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with our heart. We're really just loving on each other and sharing things that are encouraging and building people up, not tearing them down, right? And so that's what we're looking at as we dive into this book. Is like, how are we going to be able to yield to the influence of the Holy Spirit? How do you know what the will of God is for your life? Right? Because I can tell you this was never the, 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 the direction I was going to go. When I gave my life to the Lord in 2009, I, I never thought about doing any of this stuff. But if, if, if the Spirit of God is, is guiding your life and you're, you're attentive to that, and you're like, I'm going to go do what, what God's calling me to do, you're going to go do it. I started off doing sound. And I went from sound to doing radio. Went from radio, but there was somebody that, that um, we had a men's teacher that was going off to plant a church, and we were going to lose our men's study. And I was like, well, I've never taught. I'll get, you know, I'll, I'll pray about it and see if I can do it. And I still can't teach, but I'm doing it. But I was just, I was just answering what the call was. It's, it, you know, there, that, that's half the problem with us is we, we, like, the Spirit of God is telling you, hey, go, go do this. 
like Sarah. Sarah's going to be gone possibly this weekend. It's like we have a guitar player, but we need somebody else that can sing. So maybe the Spirit of God is putting that on somebody where they can sing, and then they can, you know, possibly do worship. It's but you have to answer the call. You have to know what the, what the will of God is for your life. And that's beyond. I, I've, I'm, I'm very honest with y'all. I would love, love to have you involved in the church. But I also would love to have you involved in the community. Because that, that's where the, the gospel needs to go. Um, and so that's where the Holy Spirit does the work. But it, the Holy Spirit can't. It's important for us, in order for us to be yielded to the Holy Spirit, we have to live that out in our homes first. Right? It, it, it's within our marriages. Um, and, and then with our kids. Like, the, the, the biggest thing is, like, are we, we talked about it this weekend, like, what kind of fruit are you producing? Are you just, do you look like a healthy tree? Like, I'm a Christian, but... When you get home, they're like, I don't see it. The kids are like, I don't see it. And, and so we have to realize it's like we are witness. We shine light like the light that we shine is for Jesus. And people are looking. And like, hey, is that person following? Like, is there evidence? And so in order for us to know the will of God, we have to be led by the spirit of God. And, and be filled with the Spirit, okay? And so our, our prayer for as we dive in this book is that you would have a Christian life, uh, that you would know how to live that life, that it wouldn't be too hard. Like you go, man, I can't do this, right? And then understand the Holy Spirit and, and that he's working in us and learn to, to be uh, filled with the Spirit and be able to discern what is truth and to walk in victory and experience personal revival. That's what the whole book is wanting. So to be continually filled with the Spirit, that's what that means. Continually filled. That means it's a, a daily thing. To be filled continually with the Spirit. And so whose influence are you under? The flesh or the Spirit? So... Now we're going to get into the questions. So uh, if you want, before you cut me off, Court, hang on. Uh, if you want, <laughs> I just want to make sure, I'm sorry. Um, if you want the book, it's, it's under summer series under calvarydivine.org. Um, we would love y'all to be a part of this on Wednesday night. If, if you, I, I'm like this. Even if you just go read the book, go read the book. And all, because I, I wanted to help you. I know it was something that helped me early on in my faith, because I was, I was just, I felt like I was going in circles that first year. Until somebody actually sat down and discipled me and, and kind of talked to me and, and, and helped me. Um, and so that's the whole purpose of the book. And so the homework we do is really the questions at the end of the chapter. And so next week we'll be in chapter one. Uh, and hopefully the books come in. We're, we're waiting on the wonderful federal government of the post office to get the books here. They, they've, been, they've been pushed back twice already. So uh, hopefully we'll have physical books on Sunday uh, to give out. Uh, but uh, if y'all need to get a hold of me, calvarydivine.org, calvarydivine.org. And that's going to be it. I know it was quick, but um, maybe it wasn't quick. <laughs> but I, uh, we're going to go ahead and get to the questions. And go from there. God bless y'all. Goodbye.